All right, and so we are back with Twitch.tv's very own Dagrin. Yo. Guys, this is the start of our very own Dagrin block. Dagrin, no slouch to doing multiple games back to back. This man is a master of marathons at this point. This man has multiple world records across a crazy amount of games. Guys, this man doesn't really need even an introduction. I'm just going to let him take it away from here. Dagrin, what's up? What's up? I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> I, um,. I'm actually testing out a brand new setup. Actually, I haven't normally when I do marathon runs, I use like the old GBUSB2 and that like captured a Genesis said composite. And you can imagine that's pretty bad picture quality. But this time we got the Mega SG. Analogs Mega SG. You could see the clarity. I mean, well, actually, you maybe not be able to see the clarity here because, you know, pixelated 3D cutscene is. Uh, Yo, shout outs, shout outs to that FMV, baby. <laughs> you never seen Sonic's ass in that much detail. <laughs> yeah, so if you want to know, we're going to be doing Sonic 3D Blast, and then following that, Chakan the Forever Man. And then after that is going to be Rock Knight Adventures. And that's basically going to be the dagger block for tonight. Yep. And so without further ado, Dagrin, if you want to get ready to go, I am good to give you a countdown. All right. So first and foremost, got to make sure that... Um, actually, no. No, I, I reset. I actually turned off the console. So I shouldn't have the password uh, thing on. So I should be good to go. All right. Well, I'll count you down. Um, so three, two, one, go. Good luck. Thank you. And Thank you. No, I and am out of here. No, I am out of here. Wow, great start. So yes, this is Sonic 3D Blast, a kind of a game that's sort of received its fair share of hate back in the heyday. Uh, it's not. It's kind of gotten, kind of picked up quite a bit in recent times. Uh, the category you're seeing here is beat the game, which means we are not going to be doing bonus stages. Get in the thing. Uh, we will not be going to bonus stages, and we will not be facing the final fight of the game. Uh, that probably might be uh, a good thing, though, because the bonus stages can be quite nauseating to look at. But in Beat the Game, our goal is just to collect these five flickies, and we want to take it to the big ring right. Uh, just a couple turns over here, and uh, we got one more flicky to get. Take it to this ring, and we're done with the level. So yeah, in total there is about seven worlds, and each of them contain two levels, and then the third act is a boss fight. And uh, that is the other major... I mean, the flickies are like the major reason people tend to give this game a lot of whack. But the major, another major one is the boss fights. The hitbox detection is a little bit questionable in certain fights. Uh, not so much the first one, <laughs> but... Uh, you, you'll get to see some of the more notorious fights. So this fight, this stage here, we're going to be introduced to a new type of flicky, which is the orange flicky. There's four flickies in total. We've already seen the purple and the blue ones. Blue ones are big time friend, friendly uh, flickies. They don't, they like to go towards Sonic, so they don't waste your time at all. <laughs> nice job. I'm going to just take this nice and safe. Yeah, so the rust is kind of real right now. Uh, this is a pretty tough level, though. Uh, you notice the worms? They're kind of on a global cycle, I think. And if you do miss them, you do lose about two seconds if you actually... If you do end up missing them. Okay, there we go. At least we got them second pass. One last bug here. So there isn't much randomness, but the good thing is, well, actually, sorry. The good thing is there isn't much randomness, but what little there is though has pretty much everything to do with enemy behavior. Sometimes they're passive, sometimes they like to go right towards you. Usually you want them going towards you because that makes it easier to actually hit them. Now, most tend to have a problem with this game because of the flickies, but the main reason 
the Flickies can be a bit of a problem is because of really just Sonic himself. He's actually very difficult to control. Like, it, the controls are actually quite... He's quite a slippery character to control. But the idea behind it is to kind of slow down your momentum as you approach your your enemy so you can get a quick flicky grab after literally just killing the enemy. Alright, cool. That beat tends to be a little bit of a problem. So, Rusty Ruins is, um... So the second area, Rusty Ruins, there are these pillars. I guess these broken pillars that you need to break through. And in order for us to do that, we have to go into what I guess we'll call the Ballerina State. Do not ask me why this is supposed to break pillars, but it does. And coming up in here is probably the most critical one in the entire zone. We want to try to navigate around all these hazards. Okay, a little bit shaky, but we got through it. But if you do get hit, you will lose the Ballerina State, and uh, if that happened to me there, I would have had to backtrack quite a bit to reclaim it. Okay, he was not nice to me there, so there's an example of bad luck sometimes. Okay, good. Got that one, though. Now, the next act here in Rusty Ruins has a very key jump. If I do miss this jump, I will lose about 20 seconds for it. Because it will send me to the previous area. This is obviously not something you want to have happen. Uh, but it won't be for... Well, it'll, it'll be pretty short. It'll come up pretty shortly here, and hopefully we don't miss it. Try to cut down on trampoline bouncing. Here's the oh oh okay okay good we got it. A little bit shaky. I was not sure about that setup, but we're fine. And taking a hit to the fire there it doesn't really lose me time because I kind of have to wait for the green flicky anyways. And uh, usually that one's that's probably the only green flicky that's nice. So this zone this zone rusty ruins. This is our first introduction to the green flickies. They're not very nice. They like to get away from me, and they like to stick around the hazards of these pretty much every zone. Get back here, B. This will be up there. Heck, come on. There we go. Uh, can we beat this? Yes. Perfect. So, I guess one thing about the whole flicky collecting, uh, if you do take a hit, you will lose all the flickies. The same thing can also happen if the flicky line gets hit. Uh, if the very... If, like, literally right behind you... Like, if, if the... If, how many flickies you lose in the flicky line kind of is varies and depends on what part of the flicky line is uh, hit. I already messed this quick kill up. I'm going to try again. Oh, I forgot to jump. All right. I don't think I'm going to try this again. So that's kind of unfortunate. We're just going to take this nice and easy. So that was kind of a disaster, but I didn't want to really lose all my lives. If you do lose all your lives, you actually will game over. Like there's no, there's no way to, no other way to say it. That, that quick, that fight is supposed to be like 10 seconds long. But if you do miss the quick kill, you either have to die or just continue to uh, plug away at it the very, very slow way. And you saw the very, very slow way, so. Uh, not ideal, but it's whatever. Now, Spring Stadium... A lot of people don't like this zone very much. But, I like this zone a lot, and that's because of this shield that I have right here. What it does 
is if I tap the jump button after already jumping in the air, it will actually home in on an enemy. And as you can imagine, this makes grabbing flickies much, much easier. And so I'm going to be taking advantage of that throughout this entire uh, area of Spring Stadium. Okay. Uh, otherwise, though, there's not really too much to say. There are these balloons. They do make you airborne if you do hit it. Okay, well, and there, of course, are springs, you know, our favorite. What else could I talk about? This is sort of like that time in the run where there's not really much to talk about. Uh, I guess I will take this time, though, to give a big shout-out to my greatest competitive rival in this category. She recently took back the best ending uh, record, which now stands at a 37.49, I believe. Which <laughs> does have me a little bit scared because I know she'll probably go for mine next. And uh, but at the same time, I'm also pretty excited to see what her new time is going to be. So going to take a little detour here, grab that shield. Like I said, the homing shield really, really does a good abundance of the work in uh, Spring Stadium. That was very clean. Also, really utilizing these balloons just to give me that extra bit of air time in order to save, you know, a little bit of time. Oh, oh God. Please. But <laughs> let me off. I want off this wild ride. Thank you. Coming up to the area where having gold shield really is quite a, quite a bit easier. Uh, you might notice there's some holes in the ground. Uh, this, these things are awful. Okay, thank you. Uh, they have spikes that protrude out. And of course, you get hit by them. I, if I get hit by them, I will lose the shield, and that's not good. Okay. So, not much to really talk about with Springsteam. However, the boss, oh man, this boss is probably the worst boss in the game by quite a significant margin. And we're gonna nail it. So after botching Roy's Rusty Ruins, we, we managed to nail the Spring Stadium fight. So that's good to see. The fastest time you can get in the game is, or in that fight, is like a 17 in game time. But that's very, very difficult to do. Only a few people have ever managed to get that. So, an 18 is more than acceptable. Oh, come on. So, Diamond Dust. Oh, man. So, I've already mentioned Sonic is very, very slippery to control in this game. So, adding ice physics makes this quite awful. Thankfully, though, only portions of the level have ice physics to deal with. Otherwise, it's mostly just having to deal with uh, some really terrible enemies and terrible snowblower turrets. Uh, the main enemy, though, that I really want to watch out for are those snowmen that move around and shoot a whole bunch of bullets. Because depending on how you roll into them, depending on how you... Uh, roll into them, you can just sometimes get instantly killed by them, and I'm not really sure why that happens. Uh, that's sort of a question you'd have to add, ask Amber. And if you don't know who Amber is, oh my goodness. Uh, if you don't know who Amber is, this is why we don't like green flinkies. If, if you don't know who Amber is, she's like pretty much the number one fan of Sonic 3D Blast, so... She will take every opportunity to talk about 3D Blast if she can on Twitter. But she is the leader of the isometric salt mine. That's what she does call her group. 
Uh, but yeah, the, uh, the snowmen, if you do roll into them a certain way, uh, you can instantly die. And I think it has some, has to do with when, if they fire all the bullets around when you roll into them. I don't know, it, it's kind of strange. It's hard to describe. Uh, this level, though, is where that risk of that sort of thing happening is possible. Uh, usually, though, it doesn't happen. Uh, this one is pretty easy to deal with. It's the next one I have to kind of worry about it. Uh, this is another stage, though, where we're going to grab the homing shield. Uh, we do have the regular shield. This is kind of gives us immunity in other man ways. Okay, cool. All right, there we go. So we should be fine now. Ideally, we want to hold on to this homing shield to the very end of the stage. All that ice and uh, really doesn't really do much. This is another reason homing shield is quite helpful, because you, then you don't have to deal with the ice physics as well. Uh, even still, though, you do need to still keep control of uh, Sonic, which I did not do a great job of there. That's fine. Okay, now, the fight in Diamond Dust is pretty simple. Uh, that being said, getting optimal hits can be a little bit problematic. You can see these things orbiting around Dr. Robotnik. They also count as a hitbox as well. Okay, that was a little uh, shaky. I'm going to lure him over here. You kind of want to get him kind of tucked away into a corner. We're just going to take it nice and slow because, uh, you know, the rest can, uh, can potentially get you killed a, little, a few times in this fight. This is a fight that's kind of quite deceiving in its difficulty sometimes. As you see, he's going quite a bit faster over the course of this fight. Okay, Volcanic Valley. Oh, man. This zone is awful. So, in the previous one, we had this, the ice, the snow blowers or whatever. That, something that can freeze you. Well, they have fire blowers in this zone. And it's... You just immediately get hit and lose your rings and flickies. It's terrible. And this section here is especially awful. Let's see if we can do it properly. Okay, that's good. Nice. All right, perfect. Sometimes you can get damage boosted into that hole, and then you have to go all the way back to reclaim the flickies that you lost after that happens. It's not fun. Also, here's a new here's a new thing that uh, the game introduces. We can actually get up here faster if we're just far enough away from the wall and jump at the right, right time. And here's a bit of luck. Okay, I could have avoided that, so that's mostly my fault. Cool. So that pretty much... Well, okay, well this... I, I was gonna say, this is pretty much Volcanic Valley 1 done. Uh, coming up, though, is Volcanic Valley 2. This is one of the scariest stages in the game. It is absolutely mission critical that I get... The, the, the I get the flame shield and keep it. There are some very, very, very awfully placed fire blowers. So I'm just gonna be quiet here and focus for a little bit. All right, cool. So now we got the fire, the flame shield, and hopefully we do not lose it for the remainder of this level. Like I said, this is mission critical that I hold on to this shield. 
is the very last part of this level. It just has a lot of fire that I have to be able to dodge, and it's very, very difficult to do if I don't have the flame shield. Because the flame shield gives you invincibility to fire and lava. As you can imagine, in a level full of fire and lava, this is very, very nice to have. Okay, cool. Wow. Not sure how I missed that. And so, yeah, that, that was the whole series of fire blowers. So we're past that now. And we don't have to worry about that anymore. So, given my life situation, I'm not going to bother doing the risky strat to go for the 18. Instead, we're going to get in the correct position to go for the... This is very, very safe. You can see I already picked up a prank. There he goes. A very simple fight. <laughs> Not really much to say about him. But that's Volcanic Valley. Now, Gene Gadget. This is probably considered most people's least favorite zone. I actually like this zone a lot, but it is a very difficult and very technical zone. And oftentimes, most professionals will tell new runners to practice this area first. Like, Gene Gadget in general first. And there is very good reasons for this. Uh, coming up now is probably one of the hardest parts of the run. Let's see if we can get this enemy. Nope, we didn't get it. Okay. Come on. Hey. Can't leave the... Yeah, so that's hitboxes, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. Okay. Uh, this can be a little bit scary. So you can see my flicky lines getting hit here. Hey, flicky, flicky. Thank you. <laughs> I was sort of uh, very bad outing with that zone, at that area, but that's why I say it's probably one of the hardest parts of the run to do properly. Oh, come on, Sonic. Is Gene Gadget 1. Bit of a sloppy level, but it is what it is. Now, Gene Gadget 2 has one of two uh, special things. Okay, well, Gene Gadget 2 is, is the level that contains what is aptly called the Slope of Rage. What the Slope of Rage is, is a very steep steep hill that I can fall down and if I fall down it I will have to retry I have to go back to an area I was just at and retread uh, steps oh my goodness um let's see if we can actually land on this thing uh, okay okay yeah we're fine almost fell down we we're fine though okay I just oh um I'm missing a flicky hang on a second here just gonna get. I'm an idiot. I forgot if I actually forgot a flicky. See, yes, is this one? Well, that's a non-common mistake. Okay, so yeah, that spot there, you don't usually want to get hit. Thankfully, I only had one flicky there. But uh, that turret is in a very, very badly placed spot. And if you get hit there, you're very likely going to lose the run because your flickies will likely disperse and go down the Slope of Rage, which is another reason why it's called the Slope of Rage. But you can see that I had to backtrack uh, by going down the Slope of Rage to retrieve my 
final flicky that I forgot to grab. Ideally, we don't want to do that, but if you do forget a flicky, that's kind of what you have to do. Oops. Okay, we're gonna have to wait. There we go. But yeah, if you go down that particular slope of rage, it's kind of, I think, at least about a 20, 25 second time loss. Well, it's probably more like a 20 second time loss. Regardless, there is another one we have to deal with, but that one at most only loses you about eight, uh, eight seconds. So it's not really a big deal. That's the major slope of rage, the one in Gene Gadget 2. Now, this boss, as you can see, I'm kind of taking advantage of the conveyor belt a little bit. Kind of having them drag. Uh, okay, we're gonna just grab these rings. It's nice and safe. I'm gonna actually go to this side. Oh. There we go. Yeah, this is kind of uh, fighting in a nutshell. You have to... You're kind of forced to wait on Robotic. This is a fight you can't really speed up other than trying to get optimal hits. It's uh, a little bit unfortunate, but it's what it is. So one more hit ought to do it. And then once we're done with this fight, we move on to the last area of the game, which is Panic Puppet. The first zone of Panic Puppet is, is our last level involving Flicky Collecting. We only have to grab one set of Flickies for this level. And instead of killing enemies, we actually just need to open these capsules and free them that way. Now, coming up, I have to squeeze through these mines. Oops. We did that, and we managed to get up that uh, slope. That's also pretty di difficult. Thanks, Green Flicky. <laughs> there we go. There we go. That's, uh, that was kind of unfortunate, but that was my fault, so... That's, uh, that's what I get. Okay, cool. We actually got that. That's actually pretty difficult. I could have grabbed that invincibility for safety, but... I think we've messed up enough in this run that I think I need to at least... At least try to nail some more difficult stuff. So that's pretty much it for the the flickies and now we move on to panic puppet 2 and this is just getting to the end of the level this also is the last this is also the other level that contains the second slope of rage and uh again like i said it's not a costly one but it's also very difficult to nail this first this particular slope of rage first try so hopefully i do it Also, Eggman. Sorry, I'm not very good at actually doing that whole thing. That's that's Swezzy's territory, so. Okay, we got it, nice. That is uh, that is the Slope of Rage right there. It is very easy to mess up that particular uh, isometric platforming, but we did it. And uh, we move on now to the final boss of the game, which is a very anticlimactic fight. Uh, there are three phases to this fight. Uh, the first one is by far the hardest. You gotta try and beat the arm. Uh, this is very hard to do, uh, optimally speaking, because you gotta be able to control your movement and uh, not be too antsy with trying to run away from the arm. You have to be able to let the arm actually try to slant itself down before you move. And this can sometimes be difficult. 
Uh, by comparison, though, second and... The second and third phase are nowhere near as difficult. Of course, I, uh, I jinxed myself by trying to say that because I took that unfortunate hit. Not that it's really gonna matter too much. Uh, all you really have to do, though, is just jump around and make a wide circle around the uh, boss to bait out the flames. Now, the third and final phase has a nice little trick associated with it, but it actually loses you four seconds to do it. <laughs> so we're just going to do this the normal way. And just have ourselves a clean uh, remainder of the fight. And hopefully get under uh, 29 minutes. This run did not go exactly very smoothly, if I do say so myself. It's fine. It's still under 30 minutes. Oops. Actually, wait. Okay, there we go. 28.59. 28.56. That's the time I got. So, how we're going to do the remainder of the runs, uh, Fatbody would normally probably come in at this point, but he has told me that I just go straight to the next run. So, I think what we'll do, since the credits are short enough, since the credits are short enough, I'll let those play out before I move on to the next run. Uh, thank you, everyone, for the GGs. And, uh... Yeah, next will be Chakan the Forever Man, which I really hope goes uh, quite a bit better. Because that run can go very, very south in a hurry, especially with the particular category I'm going to be doing. Which is going to be all levels on the hardened difficulty. And I just forgot that I do not actually have the chat open. So I am going to rectify that right now. Where are you? There you are. But yeah, that was Sonic 3D Blast. Thank you, everyone. For watching, I... Okay. Right, my Mega Ever drives in. Good, cool. I mean, I actually have a car in Japan, but... Nah, we we got the ever drive in. I don't need to be slipping in different carts and wearing down the uh, the thing, the, the pin connector. Hmm? Hang on a second. Okay, I've joined the call, Fat Body. I'm sorry. Okay, I've joined the call, oh, Fat no, Body. You're good. I'm sorry. I'm just, oh, no. uh... All right, so I got the desktop audio. Everyone okay. should be able to hear you. Oh wait, I need to add. I need to join it here. Wait. Okay. Speak real quick. Make sure I can hear you. All right. Hello. Hello? Okay. Yeah. You. Yeah, hear I'm here. I'm here. Word. I'm just, just so yeah, I just uh. I... Yep. And I'm uh, I'm getting it so that I reset the timer for you. Awesome. Yep. And so I'll let you set up real quick. All right. Cool. So yeah. All right. Do you want to tell us a little bit about Shakan the Forever Man? Okay, Shakan the Forever Man. So. First and foremost, I want to shout out to one, probably my longest, one of my longest time, longest supporters. Uh, he actually mentioned this game a long time ago to me, and I never actually played it before. And um, it seemed quite interesting. And it also was a game that hadn't really been explored as far as speedrunning was concerned. There was like a few any percent runs. And like, well, actually, yeah, there was a few any percent runs. And then, like, really one actual uh, all levels speed run. But there was really no actually tackling the harder difficulty because you took okay. like double the damage in it compared to the uh, default difficulty, which is easy mode. So, as you can imagine, this uh, this is going to make uh, for a very interesting run because, like I said, we are going to play this 
on hard difficulty because uh, I aim to please my audience with with uh, with, with a fairly uh, scarier run. Yeah, you like to show them that, you know what I'm saying, you got that thick peen and you're going to eat the ass always. We understand, man. All right, so whenever you are good on time, I am also good to get you set up. All right. Yeah, I'm pretty much... So let me know uh, when I'm good to give us a countdown. Yeah, I got the... Uh, I'm on the option right now, or the options menu, so I'm pretty much good to go whenever. All right, well, I'm ready to count us down, so I'm, I'm going to go ahead and do that, all right? Okay. All right, three, two, one... Go, good luck. Thank you. One. Our go, case. Thank you. Okay, so unlike Sonic 3D Blast, I gotta hold the controller. Uh, like, I gotta do the claw position for my um, right hand here, and this is pretty important because uh, we're gonna be abusing a certain exploit in this game. Uh, Chakon the Forever Man is, I guess. I guess since this is a pretty, uh, pretty slow level where we're waiting on sort of platforms and stuff, uh, the, kind of the lore behind this game is you are a, pretty much, you're pretty much the strongest swordsman in the world, and, uh, I guess, uh, how the game depicts the storyline, uh, Chakan sort of gets it in over his head when he's the strongest swordsman in the world, that he could even take down Death himself. So Death kind of challenges him into a duel. Chakan does win this duel, but the the reward for winning this duel, uh, <laughs> the reward for winning this duel is uh, not very good. He now is plagued by a whole bunch of nightmares of people who have been uh, killed by all sorts of evil within the world of Chakan. Uh, the other major thing is that he can't die, even if he tries to. Even if he tries to die, he can't. Uh, you'll see that uh, you can die in this game, though, but that only will temporarily kill you. It will, like, if you die in this game, you'll just be sent back to the main portal, which is where I was just recently. Okay, good. So, um, let's see. Yeah, so Chakan can't really die. Uh, he can feel pain though, which is why, which is why uh, he is, uh, which is why uh, his um, his in invincibility is more a curse than it is a blessing. But yeah, basically what he needs to do is he, in order to get rid of this uh, invincibility, or sorry, in, in order to get rid of his uh, his curse of uh, not being able to die, he needs to actually kill all the evil that resides in the world. So that is exactly what he's trying to do. And while I was explaining the lore, a whole bunch of stuff was going on uh, in that first area. Uh, there are four different portals that we have to go into. Each of them contain three levels, and uh, the, with the third level having a boss residing at the end of it that you have to vanquish. And uh, the trick you're seeing here is going to be taken advantage of again. I like to call it the infinite double jump. Some like to call it the infinite jump, but it, you are basically trying to constantly double jump up. And uh, this trick here costs me 12 seconds if I fall. Okay, you didn't fall. That's good. Nice. And uh, because we did that exploit, we now are... We're now uh, all the way up to the mini boss. This was not the intended direction for us to go, but uh, it saves a humongous amount of time. In Like, this level is kind of barred away, and in order for us by these wooden doors, I mean, and in order for us to break down those doors, we actually need the axe to break them down. But we don't have the axe right now. So we make do with what we have. So we're just going to cut down a decent portion of the climbing of that level. 
with the uh, exploit known as the infinite double jump. Which is basically performed by alternating between attack and jump. Uh, the timing is a little bit weird. It's not precise, but it is kind of hard to pin down the timing, especially starting off. Oh, okay, there we go. So yeah, there is the boss of uh, Terrestrial Air. And now we're going to move on to Terrestrial Earth. And this is... this um In easy mode, this is a very lax, lax portal. But in hard, it's... It's a pretty brutal area. We're actually gonna, we're actually gonna pop a, uh, a different spell here, and we're gonna take a little bit of a shortcut. Uh, the intended uh, direction to go here is to kind of go a roundabout way, but it involves a lot of damage boosting, and because of that, this level is actually arguably one of the hardest for that, for that uh, with the older route. However. By, ha by popping the high jump spell there and uh, breaking away the web, we actually cut a decent uh, portion of the level out and it becomes a much easier level. Now, this level... This level is rough. Um, at the end is going to be a mini boss. He does two skulls worth of damage. Like I said, everything in hard mode does double the damage and that includes bosses and mini bosses. And mini bosses do a full skull on easy, so I'm gonna do a very Oh, okay. Okay, we got our, we got bad chip. So we're gonna actually do this the uh, the slower way. Which means we're gonna have to wait for this guy to grunt a few times before taking our swipe. Uh, we the uh, faster strat is to actually do overhead swipes, but this involves getting close to him, and he has a very dumb hitbox sometimes. But yeah, that was the uh, that was the safe back, so that was nice. Now the final level of Terrestrial Earth is actually quite easy. Uh, you wouldn't think so, but there's a little bit of an abusable thing with this next upcoming fight. Right, good. Uh, like I said, bosses do do two hearts, of, do skulls of damage, so this is a, a little bit of a scary situation. However, this boss does not have an actually active hitbox if you stay low and crouch and roll around. There's nothing really uh, this boss can do if you stay low. It's only her top half that actually has an active hitbox. Um, you also might have noticed I was imbuing my swords with, uh, uh, I was powering up my swords there. It's, swords, when enchanted, are the highest damage dealing thing you can do in the game. You don't really have, uh, an actual damage spell to deal with fights, boss fights. So that's, like, kind of your main, uh, that's kind of like your main, uh, way of doing damage to them. Oops. And, uh, that's kind of the sticking point with, uh, Really with uh, this game in general like this game is a very difficult game like uh, Anyone who's actually played it could probably vouch for that uh, statement But um, it's made quite a bit easier if you know and understand the magic system So you'll notice I'm popping like potions and whatnot and uh, I'm grabbing certain potions in order to utilize certain spells for certain situations and this is so that I can deal with certain threats that are coming up throughout the uh, throughout the run uh, itself. I also had to get rid of that uh, octopus to open the way to this weapon here. That's the grappling hook, which is what I was supposed to use in that second level I was at. But you know, it's it's slower to use it, so it's whatever. Now. This level here involves a lot of infinite double jumps. So it's a very, very, very technical level. And uh, because of that, uh, it's it's very easy to lose a lot of time here if you don't have it down. There's also a lot of hazards to avoid here. We want to make sure we do not take any more than one extra unintended hit. Okay, got past him. That's good. Sometimes you can take a hit to hell. Oops. 
Okay, well, I actually messed up the infinite double jump there. Once you do the spin attack... Ooh, this is scary. Um, let's see here. Uh, I need you away from me. There we go. Okay, so... This is a bit scary. I might actually die here. I'm gonna take this nice and safe. Okay, we got it. That's the octopus we have to, have to, to kill there. But you can see I was like a hit away from death, so I had to take that a little bit safe. Alright, so I mentioned the grappling hook is mostly useless. Uh, this is the one level where it really, really sees quite a bit of use. Uh, but of course, because of the infinite double jump, uh, you can see its uses are actually quite limited in most cases. Uh, this level is actually very, very awful. Uh, usually it's quite ambiguous what you're supposed to do, and sometimes the game doesn't make it quite clear where you need to go. But uh, beyond this door here is where the boss is. All right, cool. And uh, we are imbuing with Earth, and which is the weakness of this fight. And that's uh, terrestrial water. That's all the terrestrial planes out of the way. We've destroyed all the evil in those planes. Now we move on to the four elemental planes. And these are quite a bit scarier, or at least most of them. Uh, we're going to deal with the scariest of the bunch, which is elemental fire. All this lava will kill me instantly. So, uh, unless it's actually falling down, because that's just part of the background. Uh, there are some very difficult jumps, and some of these platforms can... I can fall through them. Of course, uh, that time I just failed my jump. So we're going to try again. Like I said, uh, if... Um, uh, there is uh, some moving platforms, and if they overlap a stationary platform, there's a decently good chance you will just fall through it, which uh, makes this uh, a very scary level. Okay. So I'm actually going to be quiet here. Made that jump. Okay. Yeah, we made it. <sighs> yeah, that's probably the scariest level in the game. The highest chance of falling through a platform too. That level. But it's also a realistic thing that can happen in the next level. And actually, the next level especially scares me because um, I have to pop an invincibility to get through this level uh, cleanly at the start. So if I do die at any point in the next level, I will end up having wasted those that valuable resource. So um, hopefully that is not going to happen. Uh, this level's not a big deal. The main thing is to just get the potions we need. Ideally, getting a full stack of red potions for the uh, portals that will follow. Okay. So I'm going to be quiet here. This is a place I can very easily die. So we're going to pop this invincibility. This is a safety strap. Like I said, this is a very, very scary level. If I do die here, there's a good chance the, the run's going to be in a bit of danger. Because uh, the thing is, we're on the third level here, which means we, with all that ha those hazards and 
instant uh, death lava, we all still had to get through a boss fight, which is kind of scary. Uh, this guy, you can't really uh, use uh, enchanted weapons to deal with him, because he'll just run away from you. That's just, it's just, that's how his AI was programmed. Also has a pretty quality sound, uh, sound that is used for when he actually takes a hit. I don't really know why the developers did that, but, you know, it's whatever. Now, Elemental Water, uh, we're going to Elemental Water next, because the only potions we actually need to use is two reds, and, uh, that is strictly for just the boss fight that we, uh, the evil that we have to vanquish in this portal. Uh, we don't need to use any other potions than that. Now here we're going to abuse the overhead slice. This is what the hammer is capable of doing. Uh, breaking these platforms here. And hopefully I don't die here. There's a good chance I could too. Th that I can die here. Alright, cool. We hit it. Oh my god, I almost fell off that platform. We're fine, though. So, yeah. This is a pretty, pretty slow part of, um, <laughs> of this, uh, particular game. This is probably the only true, actual, uh, auto-scrollery section. So there's not really much for me to talk about. But there is, however... Another exploit that I am taking advantage of here. So, you might have noticed that some enemies are actually appearing in the water. This is actually caused by me double jumping high enough and forcing their spawn into the water. And this allows me to safely get on these platforms, even though just a moment ago they were camping. And this is nice because we don't actually want to take any uh, damage. We don't want to be taking any uh, pot shot damage. Some of them actually do a uh, two skulls worth of damage on hard, so it's kind of bad. Anyway, time for me to shut up and focus, because this stage can kill me as well. Nice. Oh god. Oh god. This is uh, a little bit scary now. Uh, okay. Alright, this is going to be a little bit scary. Uh, we are a hit from death. And hopefully I do not take a hit. I'm going to pop that. And we're going to try to reduce the lag by going into this spot here. You can reduce the lag even more if you stay even further away. Actually, you know what? Since I'm in a bit of a scary situation here, I'm going to actually cause more lag just to make sure I know where we are at in the cycle. Better to be safe than sorry. But you can see, as the boss is actually moving around, he's actually causing quite a bit of lag by throwing out all that snow as he's moving around. However, in this case, given our situation, we do want to ensure that we do not die. Because, again, if you do die, but you used up potions, uh, you will lose those resources. So, that's probably the most ideal thing you... that The ideal thing would be to not lose those resources. So, we're going to do just that. So that should have been pass number... That good. And that should finish him off. Perfect. So that gets rid of the elemental water plane. Now we move on to the elemental earth plane. And by comparison, this is a lot less scary and a lot shorter of uh, of, uh, of, an, of an elemental plane. Unfortunately, I am messing up the start here, but it's whatever. This is kind of, kind of the point in the run where you can kind of breathe easy because uh, 
it's very likely you will finish the run, even if, uh, even assuming the worst possible case scenario. Alright, cool. Just gonna grab this clear, make sure that we have enough potions for what we need to do. And now, now we move on to Elemental Earth 2, and here is where we're going to see the big, uh, potential time loss enemy. He doesn't actually do damage to you, but he is able to grab you and send you all the way back to the far, far left. In order for us to avoid this, we need to pop this spell here, which is the invisibility, which not only serves as invincibility, but nothing can even touch you under this effect. So we're going to take advantage of that uh, for that particular situation. We can potentially see him again, but uh, we're not going to pop any spells in this section, aside from imbuing our our swords, because of course this is the this is uh, the the boss. This is this is the level where the boss resides. Um, this is kind of scary. Okay, good. Okay, so unfortunately we missed uh, the hit there, but that's fine. Just means, uh, just means we get to sit through this whole thing for one extra cycle. You can kind of see why this boss is not really a big deal. Because if you just hold this posture, yeah, there's nothing he can really do. There are eggs spawning behind me, but unless I actually move away from this area, he can't really, the eggs can't actually hatch and cause a problem. And that's Elemental Earth. Pretty, pretty easy uh, section. It's probably the easiest section in the run, if I'm going to be completely honest. Now, what do we got here? Okay, yeah, no, no, we're going to we're gonna actually take this nice and safe. I just, we're going to wait for a ride here. going to utilize this mount that this guy is riding. Oh, come on. And we're going to have him carry us to victory. Uh, this level here, well, actually, I mean, you might have noticed there are these portals at the end of the level. We need to get to these portals in order to actually clear the level, and here it is right here. Those lasers that I've been, that I've been maneuvering around, they do cause four skulls worth of damage. So as you can imagine, you do not want to get hit by those. And uh, in this particular case here, uh-oh. We're gonna abuse the invincibility to get past all the hazards here. And I am uh, kind of. Uh oh, uh oh. Um, can I still make it? Okay. Okay, we made it. Barely, but we made it. So, my invincibility was just about to wear off there, but we did manage to get past it, past all the lasers. And uh, there's the end of the level. So now we are coming up to the final uh, level that we have to deal with, and this is where the boss resides. I'm going to um, going to take this part nice and easy. That enemy is quite a problem, and he has killed a uh, number of my runs. Oops. Hit this guy once again. We're utilizing the mount here, and we're gonna utilize him to bob and weave around these lasers. Looks a little sketchy, but, um, well, some of them actually are pretty sketchy. Not even gonna lie. But, uh, yeah, we're past the worst of the bunch, so. Cool. Not even sure how he didn't hit me there, but I'm not question it. Oh, oh god. Uh, this is kind of scary now. I need you to stay away from me. Stay away. Thank you. Okay, well, we fucked that. <laughs> Whoops! Alright, let's try that again. I became a little too preoccupied by that other enemy. It's okay, we'll try again. We don't need to grab that blue potion again, because we already grabbed uh, the other one. We didn't use it. So we're just gonna try again. Hey, come on. Get up there. Okay, 
<laughs> I actually almost didn't make that jump. Let's focus and not die here this time. Alright, cool, we made it. So now we're at the boss. I'm gonna just grab this. I'm gonna pop that. And then we're gonna pop this. And gonna try to beat his movement so we can get as much damage as we can while the invincibility is on. This guy, it's actually pretty easy to get hit by him. So we do ideally want to have this invincibility for this fight. Hopefully it will hold out until we kill him. There we go. Got him. And that's the end of the game. Well, actually, that's not the end of the game just yet. But it pretty much is. We've pretty much accomplished our goal now of defeating all the evil. But. And I do say this, but. There's a bit of a troll, trolly ending to this game. Which is why I had to explain the lore. So I already mentioned how they had a duel, how he had a duel with death, and, you know, kind of how his curse works, that he had to destroy all the evil to get rid of the curse. However, what the death actually, what death actually truly meant by destroying all the evil, he literally meant all the evil. Not just the ones in the world of, that Chakong resides in, but all all the all the worlds that exist in the universe so as you can imagine it is not a good day it's not good times to be Chakan. he's unfortunately going to be forever tormented you know considering the time era that this game is supposedly taking place in that being said though we will have at least one more challenge with i guess or one more uh fight here with i guess this is death i don't even know if i should call him that because i i honestly don't know what the hell this thing even is and i'm sure all of you probably are asking the same exact thing uh, but with the use of a couple of spells we kind of make quick work of this fight and time is about to come up here and there we go. That's the end. So, yeah. That was Chakon the Forever Man done on the hard difficulty, all the levels. Uh, what you see before you is the hourglass. Fun fact, if you actually stay on this screen for 15 minutes, you will actually get a message that will pop up saying not the end. Of course, I in the interest of uh, not uh, having you all suffer by sitting, we are not going to sit through this. I'm not, I'm not going to make you do that. I leave that for my viewers. And only when I hit milestones in this game. But I guess before I switch games, I probably am going to... I'll mention uh, that there was an hourglass in the bottom right corner. That's mostly just a time limit set on you to clear uh, the portal it's tied to. It's not a time limit to beat the entire game. It's just a time limit to beat the portal you are trying to currently clear. And there is actually a spell that flips the hourglass to give you more time. So once again, it kind of goes back to the whole, you need to understand how the spell system works. And if you do, it makes your life so much easier when actually trying to play this game. So yeah. That's pretty the, much it for Chakan the Forever. Been given, I'm being given the call the, to join a call. I've been given Dr. Fatbody. How are you doing? Hello? I think your mic is muted, Fatbody. Oh, okay. Yeah, my mic was muted. Thank <laughs> you for that. All right, so we back in there, y'all. We are on hour eight of the marathon. You know what I'm saying? Everything is going wonderfully. You guys, we have seen Pokemon, we have seen Marvel vs. Capcom, we've seen Digimon, we have seen a handful of platformers, and coming up next we have nothing short of amazing. We have Rocket Knight Adventures by Dagger, in which this man came and basically changed the face of this game as we know it. 
And so I, for one, am very excited. I know, chat, if you love Rocket Knight Adventures, you know, that, that good old Konami music, some of the art that's in there. If you think that's great, man, it doesn't. It fails in comparison in terms of the movement and some of the boss skills that you are going to see Daggerin display coming up. Daggerin, do you want to talk a little bit about the run before we get into it? Okay, yeah. So Rocket Knight Adventures, I'm sure everyone kind of knows, like, somewhat about this series. It's not, like, the most well-known series. Uh, there, it, There is its abundance of auto-scrollers, but... <coughs> so it, it does kind of... Uh, it is quite an optimized run at this point, but there are... There is quite a few... Uh, it, there's a number of um, big time saves that, uh, that... That wasn't really understood until uh, I, I actually picked up the game and uh, sort of played around with. And uh, I hope to properly display it. I know that a number of them I couldn't display last time I did this run. But yeah, this game is uh, this game has got quite a dedicated fan fan base, and uh, notably, some new blood has been picking up this game recently, and uh, that has me quite excited because uh, some are looking to push for very good times, and I'm sure quite a few of them are in the chat currently. And really, really looking forward to this run in general. Uh, before we do get started, though, there are I am playing on the U.S. version, and actually the difficulties are quite uh, qu quite a bit different between the versions. But if you do want to know, the U.S. version has all the difficulties accessible from the get-go. Uh, children difficulty, children difficulty actually takes out the last auto scroller in the game. As well as, I believe, gets rid of... It reduces the amount of health of all of many of the boss fights. Uh, easy is the difficulty we are going to play on. It's uh, a little bit more difficult, and it does contain the final auto scroller. Uh, normal, you just had, you take more damage, and that's pretty much it. And hard mode's where things get pretty rough. You can't take a single hit, or you will instantly die, and you have no continues once you game over it's uh it's the end of the run so yeah that's a lot of fun so that's why we're going to do this on the easy difficulty maybe one day i'll probably try normal if i feel bold enough so yeah that's pretty much all i have to say and uh fat body you can uh take over on countdown so we can get this uh show on the rope word and before we count down y'all just for all the new viewers out there i just want to give a reminder um, we do have a raffle going off for all the donations to help the goons get there. You know what I'm saying? Uh, everybody will be added in. Um, over the next couple of weeks, I'll be hitting everyone up, let, let, letting people know who won. Uh, every bit, every donation, every sub goes towards that. Our goal is 2000 guys. Right now, we're over $600. It's been amazing. You know what I'm saying? We're helping five different people get to GDQ. It's myself, uh, the man you're seeing right here, Dagrin, Chubbis. Cronoon and kick ass pancakes, you know what I'm saying? People in the Sega community who have done a lot, putting putting on stuff like Blast the Process, getting world records and multiple things. So yeah, I just want to give y'all a quick reminder on that. Also, uh coming up next after this, we do have Super Mario 64 randomizer by uh Zaxxon96. Uh he's much more known for his Sonic stuff, but he's been, you know, dipping his toes in a little bit, so it's definitely gonna be fun to see him with a bit of variety. So uh Dagrin, uh whenever you're ready, I'm good to count us down and uh we can I'll let you take it from there. Okay, uh before we start, isn't it Rice Star after me? Oh, it is Rice Star after you. I'm sorry, you you are correct. It's Rice Star by Chubbis, just, and then I was just we have saying, because Chubbis is like, Can can you help with commentary? And I was like, Yeah, sure. I'll help with commentary. I was just about to say, I don't think I think that Super Mario sixty four randomizer happens after that run though. Just uh to remind yep. That is correct. Okay. So, yeah, that was pretty much all I had to uh, mention. So, yeah, we'll get this uh, We'll get this started. Fat Body, if you want to do the countdown, I'm ready to go. All right. In three, two, one, go. Good luck. Thank you. Go. Good luck. So, yeah. Rocket Thank you. Knight. So, yeah. Rocket Knight Adventures. You play as his possum clad in armor, he has a sword and a rocket pack. You only have two actions you can perform. And coming up is... Wow, I actually got that. That's actually not easy to do. I... 
in Rocket Knight Adventures, you'll see that I'm hopping uh, constantly at times. This is in order for me to maintain my movement momentum. Uh, it's what we aptly like to call possum hopping. Oops. Okay. I kind of messed this up. Oh, God. Oh, God. All right. We're fine. We're fine. I'm going to just boost right up here. So I can get right up here and possum hop my way up here relatively quickly or as quickly as I can. And now we're about to face our first mini boss here. Uh, this mini boss is actually hit based, so it doesn't really matter, uh, you know, what attacks you actually use. Oops. Uh, the second part of this fight, though, is HP related, so it does depend on what attacks I actually use. And I'm actually going to try and. Oh, I kind of messed this up a little bit, but that's fine. And here's our first auto scroll of the game. But the uh, the idea of uh, your damage, uh, your attacks, is uh, your main your main source of damage is going to be the base sword that I'm using quite frequently there. Uh, I think it damages per frame the base sword, so that's why we use it uh, quite a bit in this particular uh, this particular run. You'll see me, however, utilize the. Uh, you see me utilize the uh, rocket boost a number of times. Uh, where you actually rocket boost does does alter um, how much damage you do, though. You want to ideally you do ideally want to actually uh, do rocket boost in uh, the orthogonal directions, which is directly north, south, east, and west. A diagonal rock boost actually do less damage, and uh, there's also the charge attack, which makes you spin in place, which <laughs> doesn't really do any damage, so you want to avoid that at all costs. Uh, the castle this, the castle here is actually a very janky level design, so it's actually quite easy to mess it up in the speedrun, uh, but we handled it pretty well, and we're already to the main boss here. Stage 1's actually quite a technical level. Uh, this is another hit base related fight. So we're just going to opt for the projectile here. It doesn't really do much damage, but again, on a hit base related fight, uh, damage values actually don't matter. So it's going to take the same amount of damage no matter what. The other important thing, and you might have noticed I've been draining my health as uh, much as I safely can. This is so that I can have the health drain down over the course of of the result screen, and this saves time. It allows you to get through the result screen faster. All right, cool. Got the relatively good kill on that fight. Uh, coming up, however, is one of the harder quick kills to get in the game, and I am gonna need an audio cue to do this quick kill. And hopefully we get it. It's actually, it's actually, my setup here for this fight is actually one that I take credit for. Uh, the runners used to do this fight quite a bit differently. We messed it up. Okay, so now we're going to be doing this fight uh, quite a bit differently. Alright, that's fine. Uh, yeah, we're on the right side. So unfortunately, we did not do that properly. I wasn't far enough over to the left side. But how that fight kind of works, those platforms actually alternate me from the background to the foreground. And the boss, as you saw there, started in the background. However, I needed to be on the vine branch so I can actually jump and uh, start hitting the weak spot, which is the tail of that snake fight. You'll see it as like that, that red weak spot. It's pretty obvious what the weak spot is. But it's a very difficult fight to, to do properly, admittedly. But yeah, now that we're past that fight, we're on to the auto-scroller. And, uh, well, there's a number of pretty scary spots in this auto-scroller. I can very easily die at the end of this, so I am going to be quiet here and focus for just a brief moment. 
Okay, nope. Not gonna even try to challenge that. So we're gonna take this nice and safe again. There we go. But yeah, if I died in that one jump that I um, that I actually messed up there, I uh, I would have had to start the entire auto scroller again. It's not fun. But yeah, you, you see, I was kind of like rocket boosting from one uh, from one minecart to the other. If the minecart's actually flashing, you can slip off it, which is kind of scary. Uh, but if it isn't flashing, it will just hone in on your current position. As you can see here, I'm actually standing on the tail edge. And now comes the boss. Nice. Managed to squeeze into the correct spot. Not at the ideal health value, unfortunately, but it's okay. Now, this phase here tends to be the one that foils most people starting off. But you're not in really any rush to actually kill him as soon as possible. Because you can see the train has to get to the right side. Which means you're having to wait for him anyway. Alright, cool. And uh, that strat there I just did is uh, quite risky. I have a... I mean, I don't have... I mean, it's not an ungenerous window, but you do you have a pretty limited window to try and kill the final phase uh, doing what I just did there, which was basically damage boost into the boss and uh, sword swipe into death. And that's why I say the base sword is the biggest damage dealing thing in the entire game. Now, this screen can very easily kill me. This lava is a one-hit death hazard. Oh, God. Okay, we're taking this easy. There we go. Didn't die. Nice. That's the hardest screen in Stage 3, in my opinion. Uh, this screen is all about cycles, and um, your movement can manipulate the fish's spawn somewhat, especially uh, in a certain spot. And we even got that. Perfect. So you can see I just immediately forced the screen down. And here comes the mini-boss. Another hit-based fight. However, he requires many more hits. If I don't get rid of this claw right here, for whatever reason, getting rid of that claw, like, takes out 75% of his max HP. Kind of silly. Don't really know why, but that's what it does. I believe the other claw is taking out, uh, I think taking out the other claw is reducing his damage done. I'm not entirely sure, but we just ignore the left claw. It's not really a big deal. And, yeah, on to another auto-scroller. Uh, not really... Nothing really much to say here, but, uh... uh after this... Oh, oh god, um... Okay, well... I tried to save that, and I didn't. Alright, well... Oh, my bad. Well, we get to sit through this again. As I now attempt to explain that at the end of this auto scroller is going to be the boss fight. There is a one cycle that we need to get or we will lose 20 seconds. But basically the idea of the fight is that uh, at some point a pig is going to jump out. And uh, that is the main weak point of the fight. Uh, but, and he just jumps up and then jumps back in the mouth, and that's basically all he's vulnerable for. So yeah, here's the fish boss. Uh, the lab here actually does three hearts of damage. For whatever reason, the other the other lab does four hearts, as you saw with me taking a depth there early on. We're gonna actually utilize the health here. Again, position with the iframes. And there he goes. So, that was the one side. So, with stage 3 out of the way now, 
we move on to stage four. This is probably one of the scariest levels in the game. And hopefully I will not die because uh, dying here tends to be quite costly in certain areas. Uh, first, though, we have a fight with Captain Fleekle here. I'm going to try to manipulate a couple things to get a quick throw on this guy. Okay. Well, we already missed one of them. And now he's proceeding to troll me. Come on. Throw your stupid thing. There we go. Oh, I wasn't even ready for it. You can tell I practiced with this one. I'm going to take another hit just to get myself at an ideal health value this stretch coming up here uh the barrels here are on a set standard pattern so as long as i know where to rocket boost i should do it just fine you actually have been pushing you too so yeah that's also fun I'm gonna take that one up for safety and here comes one of the scariest fights uh okay this is uh Actually, gonna have to take this safely now. Alright, cool. Now, hopefully, we do this. Alright. Good. Got it. So, yeah, those rocket boosts, if I failed any of those, I would have plummeted to my death. Can imagine that's a very scary moment, and it is. It is very scary. But, uh,. When you go for the world record, that's something you have to learn how to do. And uh, that section there I was just at, not really a big deal, as long as you just keep moving to the right and uh, jump and throw the projectile at the correct time. Because the lasers will will uh, vanish for you and clear the way for you. I'm just going to take a hit here. This is a little bit scary, but we're going to go for it. Okay. Nope. All right, so this is a bit of a scary situation now. So now the pattern's gonna change. Have to be weary. Okay. So this guy does two hearts. I'm gonna take this nice and safe. There we go. So, unfortunate I did not turn around and get back boosted in time. So I had to take that relatively safe. It probably would have been just as... Would have probably would have been just as fast to just die and start again. But, yeah, whatever. Uh, but with stage four out of the way, we now move on to stage five. And uh, now this is the point of the run where we can sort of breathe for a little while because much of this level is an auto-scroller. And uh, despite the fact that a lot of hazards in this level are instant death, a lot of them are quite avoidable. And so, you know, for the most part, it's a pretty lax stage in comparison to the last few that we've had to deal with. Or pretty much any, any level that we've had to deal with on this point. Uh, but I do want to take that that hit on the, those little turret things because I want to have the correct health value by the end of this auto scroller. Because I'm gonna try to at least take one more intentional hit at a certain point in this run, and hopefully I won't take another hit. But once uh, once everything's all said and done with this auto scroller. I'm gonna take this hit here and use iframes here. Perfect. So I'm gonna get up here. We got one more phase here with the Gradius Core. And there he goes. So two and a half is the perfect health value for what I need to do at the end of this level. And now we're in the. Uh, the pig kingdom. Here's the armor pigs. Get hit. If you get hit by them, then you will instantly die. So, yeah, not fun. But you can see we're kind of just racing them to these portals here. And they're going to do that again on this screen. Uh, again, though, because we have the rocket boot, the rocket pack, uh, they're not going to be fast enough to chase Sparkster down. 
uh, that's pretty much all there is to the armored pigs. Now we got this auto scroller section here. If you do get scrunched, it is death, instant death. There is a one up though that you can grab here. So, and uh, another interesting thing, you can actually rocket boost a lot earlier than you might think in this section here. I'm actually gonna try to do it right here. Looks like I should get scrunched, but I knew I was just fine. And there we go. So, yeah, this room right here. This is a nice little tutorial room. It teaches you how to utilize this platform here. And you have to learn how to do it in that room because, of course, they're going to bring this back and uh, force you to learn it because now we got these shining spikes. And yes, they are instant death as well. Which is kind of a bit scary, granted. And why it's scary is because there is going to be a rocket boost I'm gonna do at the very end of this run. And if I do miss this rocket boost, I will get hit by these spikes and I will have to do the auto scroller again. So that's about a 45 second time loss if I do miss it. I've been, I've been 100% in getting it in marathons, which hopefully doesn't mean I'm gonna to jinx myself. All right, guys, we got it. So, now that we're done with that, we are done with the auto-scroller part. Here is the boss. Uh, that is Axel Gear, our rival, the Black Knight. And we're now going to have our trademark mech fight. This is, this is pretty much a tradition at this point for this series. Uh, there is a mech fight in pretty much all the Sparkster games. Uh, this one is quite a bit more simple than the Super Nintendo Sparkster game. Uh, we're going to try to take an intentional uh, hit on the, the fifth on the the fifth hit, I think. Let's see if we get it. Okay, we missed it. Timing's a little bit off on my setup, but it's fine. So, unfortunately, because I missed the dual exchange there, he is going to run away one more time. Uh, but that's only a loss of four seconds, so it's no big deal. And that's stage five. Okay, so moving on to stage six. This is also another auto scroller. However, it's also quite a bit more tricky. Uh, to, in order to clear these packs, we need to actually get rid of not just the enemies, but the items they drop as well. This allows us to progress the auto scroller sooner. Uh, that being said, though, the auto scroller can sometimes take a little bit longer to progress. It's sort of one of the few random elements in the game. You'd think it would be the boss fights, but it's mostly the auto scrollers that, that are random in this game. And uh, right there, you saw me hit something off screen. And what I hit there uh, can be either one a meteor or an enemy. And I got a meteor there, so I got some health, which is a little bit slower to clear the stage by getting. However, it is uh, a much safer thing to get because there are times where you will take damage and uh, you want to at least have a decent amount of damage for the end of this particular um, you want to have at least enough health for the remainder of... You, you want to at least have enough health to deal with the boss fight. That's what I meant to say. But yeah, you can get either... You can either hit an enemy or a meteor. Items are safer, but they are, take longer to clear. Uh, the enemies are much faster to clear, but you, you also don't get health that way. And there is the risk that uh, you could get hit while trying to kill the enemies, which is also not good. 
And the reason it's not good is because this fight here, you take a hit to the ship's body itself, it will take half of my health away. Even on easy mode, uh, they don't they don't make it easy. Though. And there is going to be a point in this fight where we will take damage to the main body itself. Uh, but that, but first I have to get rid of the first couple of weak points here. Oof, that was close. Yeah, the timing is a little bit weird here on this setup, but, you know, whatever. I actually still was able to kill that ship's body without even taking another hit, and, uh... Yeah, so that was the first phase of the fight. Now comes the second phase, which uh, requires me to hit this weak point here, I think, four times. So, yeah, this is another pretty scripted and long fight. It's a pretty boring fight, unfortunately. However, with a long fight, the, I will take this time to start talking about the next level. This is the hardest level in the game. Like, like quite a bit. It's... The, the quick kills associated in the next level coming up is very, very difficult to pull off successfully. And uh, that includes the final showdown with your rival, the Black Knight Axel here, which involves hitting two frame windows. Once again, I'm going to try to drain my health as much as possible. Okay, this is as good as we're going to have to have before. And there goes the fight. Uh, before that fight with Axel here, though, we're going to have a fight with Emperor Devil Guest. There are two phases to this fight. And I'm actually going to take advantage of a nice little trick that was found by Vorpal on the uh, first phase involving the third rocket boost. I mentioned how Ophogonal Rocket Boosts are higher damage. Uh, we're going to take advantage of that on this fight. It looks like I'm doing this regular spin attack. However, it is just going to be the regular... Uh, it's just an up boost. And we're going to actually... Okay, well, we got hit anyway, but that's fine. So, that was a little bit messy, but it's whatever. So that's the first phase. I actually moved to the left on that third rocket boost, and that was supposed to make me super slide to the other side. And uh, by going to the other side, you actually force Emperor Devilgus to actually make that giant leap to the other side. And this is exactly what you want to do to manipulate him towards the middle. All right, so here's Axel Gear 5. I'm going to focus on this phase. This is very difficult to do. Okay. That was pretty sloppy. But whatever. We got rid of him. So yeah, those those hits are a two-frame window. Uh, there is a third frame of generosity, though. Right, got rid of the second phase. That's also can be a little bit of a dangerous phase. And hopefully we land this rocket boost and ricochet. Nice, got it. Knocks us into that second pull. And we finish him off with some sword swipes, and that's the fight. Now coming up is the hell room. I'm gonna do the. I'm gonna do a rather scary trick here. Alright. Got the hard part. And we managed to squeeze through. So if you wanna know what I just did there, I hit the bot. the. that one robot pig. And by doing that, you actually make his hitbox vanish. So you actually are able to rocket boost through him. Uh, if he's in uh, iframes. If he's not in iframes, though, you can't rocket boost through him. And that's the gist of the hell room. Now, this fight here... Oh my goodness, really. Okay, I'm just gonna... Okay, this is a dangerous situation. So, I am a hit from death. 
hopefully that, uh, hopefully I don't get hit. This would be pretty embarrassing if I die on this fight. This fight is actually fairly, fairly simple. It's actually probably the least stressful part of the run. Uh, that being said, though, I have put myself in a pretty compromised position, uh, health-wise. But we're past the scarier part of the fight. I actually want to force a diagonal uh, weak spot out of this guy because he actually phases out sooner if he is hit in the, if his uh, weak spot is exposed in a diagonal spot. Another pretty weird time save. And here comes the hardest one of the another pretty difficult phase. Normally I do counting strats, but uh, I'm a little more familiar with the timing without doing so anymore. Fun fact, though, about this phase, you don't really need to land the hit as soon as possible, because he does take a little while to actually phase out. And this phase here is actually very simple. He will always expose the weak point in the same exact spot, as long as you stand in the same spot. And that's the fight. So, a bit of a scary situation starting that fight off, but we, we, kept, our, we kept our composure. So, with the fight now out of the way, uh, that was the core fight, by the way. We now have one final stretch here, which is the last auto scroller. Uh, this is taken out in the children difficulty, which is why oftentimes we do play on the easy difficulty, because you gotta play the whole game. That's just tradition. Uh, after this cutscene, we're gonna be basically just avoiding. We're basically just going to be avoiding the core's attacks as he's going to take one final ditch effort to take me out. Uh, if I do die on this part, I'll get sent all the way back to the beginning of the previous fight. So obviously you don't want to have that happen, but on easy, this isn't really a threat because your health is refilled to full. On hard, it can be a little bit scary, but... I really, this this fight here, you can actually bait his movement when he does the little dive attack that he does periodically. Just make sure, like, once you know the timing of when he's going to dive, it's pretty easy to avoid him. But uh, once, after a little bit into this part here, the screen is going to start going red. And that means we are entering the atmosphere. Which means uh, we are, the auto scroller is about to end. He's gonna take one more final dive bomb here, and that's it. So he's gonna disintegrate here very shortly. And once he does, the screen's gonna fade to white, and that is going to be time. And there we go. So I got a twenty-eight thirty-eight, which is, I mean. It's eh, but it's also not bad, so I'll take it. And that is Rocket Knight Adventures. Really, really good game. I want to give a shout out to the Rocket Knight community. They, but, uh, you know, around the time I did pick this up, there, you know, I did inject a few things of my own, but really, the time is, you know, the record is where it is today because of the hard work of many, old, many members, old and new. So I do want to give a big shout out to them and uh, especially to Draco Dan for finding out the uh, the Axel strat that I tried to uh, do and uh, somewhat failed at in uh, in this uh, in this game. Uh, unfortunately, he was not able to stay awake for this run. Otherwise, I would have had him on commentary and he would have done the this game much better justice than I probably would have. Uh, or I probably did uh, explaining, but you know, you can't help it when you're in different time zones, you know what I'm saying? Right, so with that run now done, next up is going to be Chubbis, who is going to be doing Rice Star. And Batbody mentioned before how um, there's um, a number of people that we are trying to help get to GDQ. Chubbis is one of them. I myself am another one, so, you know, keep the donations coming. 
we do really appreciate it. And we hope to do a... We hope to do our runs justice come Summer Games Done Quick. And with that, that's all I have to say. Um, actually, no, there is one more thing I have to say. It's not going to be completely the end for me yet, because I am going to be commentating for the next run coming up. Chubbis has asked me politely, has asked me politely to help with that run, because I'm sure he will want to focus on his run. So, yeah, look forward to uh, look forward to the 100% uh, Rise Star run. And uh, with that, that's me done. So, oh, with that, I what's up? Think that buddy, yes, he has given me the call. You might want to unmute up? your mic. That body. Oh, I'm muted again. Damn. All right. Well, that means I got I got practice. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yo, thank you for the phenomenal run. Thank you. Um, not only thank you for the phenomenal run, like. You really showed your endurance there by by being able to do not one, not two, but three games back to back. You know what I'm saying? Showing showing games that all you know, like like while they have similarities, definitely very different games in terms of mechanics. Showing that you could switch from just one to one to another, just not, not, not. you know what I'm saying? So you know, we love um, our I'm proud, man. That was <laughs> awesome. So coming up. The next two runs we got on the chopping block for you guys. So starting off, we have Chubbis with Rystar. And after or and also guys, this is a pretty big deal. This is the first time Chubbis will ever be revealing his face on twitch.tv. <gasps> so what? please stick around and be there. Yep. We've never seen Chubbis face live, dude. It's gonna be pretty hype. Everyone better be here. Um Also, you guys. Uh, yeah, just stick around. We got Zaxxon coming up with Super Mario. We got a whole lot of stuff after that. And we will see the goons here in a minute. Look forward to it. 